Outside of the government and political realm proper are other co-conspirators in the global secret combination. Among these co-conspirators are the so-called tech giants. These behemoths have become more than companies. They rival the power of national governments politically, socially, and economically, as Farhad Manju, tech columnist for the New York Times asserted in November 2017. Twitter and YouTube, which is a subsidiary of Google, can be added to the list of these important and powerful tech giants. Big Tech, as it is called, has asserted this power in politics worldwide, but especially in the United States. It is a well-established fact that big tech companies are silencing conservative voices through a variety of means, including outright censorship. The Conservative Media Research Center studied the issue and found rampant bias in the practices of Facebook, YouTube, Google, and Twitter. We decided it was time for a serious investigation into this threat. Our findings are irrefutable and shocking. Specifically, we found Facebook's trending feed has been deliberately hiding conservative content. YouTube moderators are removing videos that promote conservative political views. Google uses both their search engine and their video site YouTube to deliberately and aggressively promote liberal politicians and ideas while muzzling conservative viewpoints. Twitter has been the worst place of them all for conservatives, doing things like banning pro-life advertisements while allowing ones from pro-abortion groups. Most troubling is the ability of these companies to tamper with elections. Dr. Robert Epstein, a senior research psychologist at the American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology, while testifying before the Senate, claimed that Google's manipulation of voters gave presidential candidate Hillary Clinton at least 2.6 million additional votes in the 2016 election. You testified before this committee that Google's manipulation of votes gave at least 2.6 million additional votes to Hillary Clinton in the year 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. Dr. Epstein asserted that Google was able to do so through bias on a massive scale in their search engine. Your testimony is that Google is, through bias in search results, manipulating voters in a way they're not aware of. On a massive scale. Facebook can also manipulate votes through a go vote reminder targeted at selected voters. And we know this without doubt because of Facebook's own published data because they did an experiment that they didn't tell anyone about during the 2010 election. They published it in 2012. It had 60 million Facebook users involved. They sent out a go vote reminder and they got something like 360,000 more people to get off their sofas and go vote who otherwise would have stayed home. Big tech companies will use their collective techniques and power to try to influence the 2020 election towards their preferred candidates and will do so in a big way. 15 million votes could theoretically be shifted without people's knowledge or any accountability. And, and looking forward, if I understood your testimony correctly, you said in subsequent elections, Google and Facebook and Twitter and big tech's manipulation could manipulate as many as 15 million votes in a subsequent election? In 2020, if all these companies are supporting the same candidate, there are 15 million votes on the line that can be shifted without people's knowledge and without leaving a paper trail for authorities to trace. These techniques, according to Dr. Epstein, an acknowledged authority in the behavioral sciences are invisible, subliminal, and more powerful than he has ever seen. And in 2020, 
you can bet that all of these companies are going to go all out and the methods that they're using are invisible, they're subliminal, they're more powerful than most any effects I've ever seen in the behavioral sciences and I've been in the behavioral sciences for almost 40 years. In 1961, in his farewell speech, the same speech where he warned of the military industrial complex, President Dwight D. Eisenhower also warned the nation of becoming captive to a scientific technological elite. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific technological elite. Unfortunately, that day has come, and this elite has become a powerful component of the global secret combination intent on destroying the liberty of the nations of the world.